So a few months ago, I bought an RTX 3090 as well as a 3080 and I was very surprised by the memory junction temperatures on the G6X memory, which were hot enough to boil a kettle of water on. So I decided to do more testing. I looked at temperatures in both gaming and mining, as well as do an undervolting guide for the GPU. And I also changed out the thermal pads of my graphics card. So if you want to know how to lower the temperatures on your graphics card, check out those videos and I'll leave links in the description below. Now, a lot of people ask me in the comments, well, what is the maximum temperature I can run my graphics card at without it dying or running into problems? And there hasn't really been a good answer up until now. So recently Micron updated their website with information about the operational temperatures of the G6X memory. So I'm gonna run through that with you in this video. Okay, if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And we have a Discord server now, so come along and join us there. And I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, so let's jump over to the computer and I'm gonna do it with the webcam because it's a lot easier like this. Okay, let's take a look at Micron's website for their new information. And you can do that if you just type in GDDR6X and click on that link. I've gone straight to it right here. Uh, and then you can scroll down to the bottom if you wanted to look this up yourself. Uh, it's got here a view full GDDR6X part catalog. So click on that and you can see the operation temperature here is zero degrees to 95 to 105 degrees. Uh, you can click on either the 19 or the 21. They both bring up the same data sheets. Uh, and it's loading there. Uh, so there's a data sheet here. Uh, which we'll get to but first I want to take a look at the technical notes uh, and there's a technical note here called thermal applications so we're going to take a look at that I think I've already got that open uh, and then we're going to look at two definitions of junction temperature okay so I'm just going to read the next section out and there's two junction temperatures here that you've got to pay attention to there's junction temperature reliability and junction temperature functionality now, junction temperature reliability is the temperature at which the device will be permanently damaged. This is a stress rating only and device functional operation at or above the conditions indicated is not implied. Exposure to absolute maximum rating conditions for extended periods may affect the reliability of the part for various device and package reasons. So I believe this is what Igor's lab is talking about when he says that the memory is going to permanently degrade and this is the junction temperature reliability. So say if you go past 120 degrees, well, your memory is just going to be permanently damaged. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory there. Okay, so we've also got the junction temperature functionality. These temperature limits are derived from microns test temperatures. The junction temperature functionality is the temperature below which the part should be designed to operate. Maintaining the temperature of micron semiconductor products below this temperature will ensure the functionality of the product to data sheet specifications. So this would be the temperature that is stated over here in the operational temperature 0 to 95 to 105 degrees. So if you keep below that, then you're going to get the full speed of that memory and it's going to work as intended. Whereas if you go over this 95 to 105 degrees, well then you might get errors or you might have your memory slow down. All right, so let me quickly go over this diagram of the memory module here. So you know what we're talking about when we talk about the junction temperatures and the case temperatures. So uh, TJ is the temperature at junction of device and that's the TJ here right in the middle. Um, so you've got the silicon here and you've also got a plastic case on the top that protects you from actually damaging your silicon. And that's where you're measuring your junction temperature in between your silicon and your plastic case. And then when they talk about the temperature of the case, that's actually on the top of the case here, TC. And so if you were to attach a thermal couple onto your memory modules to test out the temperatures, well, you'd probably put it on TC there. Now there was also another table here that I wanted to show you guys, the maximum junction temperatures. And it doesn't have G6X because this document was done before G6X came out. So it has G6 in here still. As you can see, it's 100 degrees, uh, as we said earlier. 
Okay, let's go to the other data sheet that I was talking about earlier, which was the actual G6X data sheet. Um, and it's got here the temperature of the case TC equals zero degrees to 95 to 105 degrees. Now it states TC, but you could take that as the T junction anyways. Um, the T junction should be fairly close to the TC. It could be that the TC could be hotter than the T junction, but um, the T-junction measures your silicon anyways, and that's the most important thing, not whether the plastic case is important. This is uh, only important if you're actually me measuring it with a thermal couple on top of the memory chip. Um, so you can just take this as T-junction. Now, it says here 95 degrees to 105 degrees. So there's a bit of margin there, and I guess that Micron is trying to be conservative because there's going to be a bit of variance between memory chips, between the good memory chips and the bad memory chips. So obviously your bad memory chips will start to not function properly at 95 degrees, whereas your good ones might still be able to function at 105 degrees. So I think they're just giving themselves a little bit of room there. Now there was one other thing I want to show you and that was the reliability temperature of your memory and it's down here somewhere. So we've got here operating conditions, absolute maximum ratings and it's essentially saying the same thing as before in that thermal applications documents. Stresses greater than those listed may cause permanent damage to the device. Um, table 3 absolute maximum ratings, the storage temperature should be minus 55 to 125 degrees Celsius. Uh, it says here, note three, storage temperature is the case surface temperature on the center top side of the DRAM. So above 125 degrees, you're going to get some permanent damage to your memory module and it's going to be unrepairable. Okay, to quickly summarize for Micron, Micron says that over 125 degrees for the case temperature, you're going to experience permanent damage to your memory. Now, I don't think that uh, your graphics card is going to let you get to 120 degrees anyways, because it's going to throttle before then. But uh, if it doesn't, then I would advise uh, going above those temperatures. Now, for functionality, Micron states that the operational temperatures should be below 95 to 105 degrees, so that it can operate as it's fully intended to. Now, in terms of my own graphics cards, I've got an MSI 3090 Ventus 3X, which throttles at 104 degrees, and I've got a Palette 3080 Gaming Pro OC, which throttles at 108 degrees. I've seen some other cards, a Gigabyte card, throttle at 110 degrees, but I think all of that is just way too high anyways. So really, I think you should be staying well below that. And also at those temperatures, the memory starts to try to throttle back down anyway by itself. So there's really no point to keep it at those temperatures. Now, my personal recommendation, because the operational temperature um, that Micron has stated is 95 to 105 degrees, I would personally try to keep it at 95 degrees so that uh, your memory operates as it's fully intended to. I would even go a little bit below that, maybe like 90 degrees if you can, because then uh, you, leave yourself a little bit of room to play with. Perhaps your ambient temperature may increase sometimes or your thermal pads degrade over time. So that way your memory temperatures are always going to be below that. Okay, so that's going to be it for this one. If you like this video, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.